Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about compositing real actors into a virtual set. So I'm going to be showing you how you can take transparent pop videos of uh, your actors or your hosts and uh, import them into a 3D set and get all the fixings and the lighting and everything taken care of so it looks like a professional production. So let's get started in iClone here. I'm going to take a look at Virtual Studio Volume 1 and Volume 2. That's the main packs we're going to be using here. You can purchase those from the content store. Uh, in the Projects tab, we have Virtual Studio Volume 1. We have all these different uh, booth setups. Uh, whether you have a virtual showroom or you want to have a, your, your salesman demoing products in a virtual environment or anything like that, these can be uh, super useful. And these are just templates you can use. You can fully customize them uh, later on down the road. And there's also things like uh, newsrooms right here. Uh, newsroom sets and all these backgrounds can be, you know, uh, applied with videos or images or what have you. All right, so this one's kind of cool for a more stylistic, sleek look. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a custom one I made. It's, it's the same as the uh, one in the Virtual Studio Volume 1, this one right here. I've just modified the lighting slightly. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to bring in our uh, virtual or our real host into this virtual environment right off the bat. So let's go over to our folder here. And I'm going to right click and drag in a pop video. And this is a transparent pop video of my good, good friend Anouk here. We're going to import that in as a billboard because billboards are always facing the camera. You can see if I um, zoom my camera and I rotate around like this, our image or our transparent video will always be facing the camera. All right, so let's press the R hot key and scale this guy up a little bit, something like, uh, like that maybe. And getting the, getting the correct position is uh, pretty important here. Let's try to get him as close to the ground as possible. Something like that should be okay. And what I want to do is have this, uh, just go ahead and play this back first of all. You can see we have the shadow casting uh, on the wall there as well, which is a very realistic, uh, immersive effect that you can use with transparent pop videos. All right, so we have our uh, dude just walked into the middle of the scene right there, uh, casting the shadow on the background. So it looks, you know, very immersive and realistic. Uh, what I'm also going to do is just load in, a, go, to my, go to my props over here. And in props, we have Virtual Studio Volume 1 and Virtual Studio Volume 2. Uh, there's all sorts of props that you can use, like I'll stretch this out a little bit here. Uh, billboards, we have display boards, hanging signs, newsroom props, trade show counters, pillars, TV sets. And in Virtual Studio Volume 2, we have all that stuff as well, Oval Office stuff, press room stuff, and stage stuff. I'm going to use one of these uh, tables from our stage in Virtual Studio Volume 2. I'm just going to click and drag it onto my scene right here. And you can see it's a little bit large, so let's press the R hotkey and scale it down to a you know, showroom size, so to speak. And we'll uh, move it about over here. And you can see now we have this uh, our actor interacting with the you know, 3D props in the scene. So that's pretty cool. You can place you know, any props you want on that table as well. You can see that through the semi-transparent glass top there, you can also see the actor uh, in the background as well. So that's just a quick uh, sample of you know what you can do as, as far as this environment is concerned. We can also go into uh, you know other videos. Say for example, I wanted to um, apply some videos to the backgrounds here. I can do that. Let's apply a couple of car videos here. So we're going back to frame uh, you know uh, frame one here. Now uh, our character is going to be talking. Pretty much the entire time. If we go through here, he's just continuing to talk, continuing to talk. We could like click and drag in one of these uh, videos here, like this uh, car video. We'll just click and drag it. Oops, we need to. This since this billboard is taking up most of our real estate right now, we're just going to make the billboard invisible right now. You can see it right here, billboard. We'll just make it invisible, and we'll import in all of our car videos to the respective screens. Um, on our virtual set right here. There's one more car video here. Oh, there we go. All right, and you can import in, like I mentioned, videos and images to each any of these planes. And then you get a nice result like this with our uh, virtual host videos playing in the background and him demoing you know, whatever product he uh, wants to demo. Okay, now here's a good sample for a business presentation, virtual product announcement, training, or any sort of other business uh, video scenario. What we're gonna do is uh, have a video reveal and a little bit of camera movement. So when our host is gesturing to his uh, uh, left right here, what we're going to do is we're going to have a video screen appear and start playing. All right, so the video that we want to start playing is I'm just going to go ahead and go into my videos here, and I'm going to right click and drag this iClone 6 splash video into uh, our, our scene here. Actually, we're going to zoom out a little bit first so we can import it in uh, at a better 
uh, perspective here. We'll just import it in over there as a billboard and make sure it's behind our host. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have it play. Uh, we're going to have it appear at this point as he's moving across our screen here. I'm going to make the video size a little bit larger to about uh, that size right there. Maybe move it down a little bit as well. And every time you do that, you want to make sure you right click and remove object animation. Um, and I also want the video to only appear at uh, this point here. So let's go ahead at uh, frame one. Let's go press uh, stop and go back to the first frame here. Let's go to our modify tab and go to our opacity. Change that opacity down to zero. And also another thing we want to do is we don't want to have the shadow for this particular video. So I can go over here to my billboard zero, which is what it added in as, and select no shadows over here. And that will take the shadow away. So at frame one, we want to have zero opacity. And then we'll play back. Don't worry about the sound and everything right now. We want to appear right here. So I'm going to click the opacity at one right now, and that's going to add a keyframe for our opacity. And then if I go over to here, I can uh, play back a little bit and then increase the opacity to 100. Now, so what we're going to have at this point here is we're going to have, uh, again, don't worry about the sound. We're going to adjust the timing of the video later. It's going to appear right here. He's going to gesture. So we want to start playing when he gestures like this. So let's press F3 and go into our timeline with our billboard selected. What I'm going to do is go to my video track right here. And we want to make sure that we have this. This is the uh, track, this is the clip for when the video is playing. So we want to make sure we have this, click and drag this clip all the way over to here when our host starts gesturing. So then we have uh, the video appear on the screen, something like this. It'll appear nice and soft in the background there. And then it'll play when he starts gesturing. And then as well, when, we, when he starts gesturing, we want to zoom in a little bit more on our host as well. So maybe for example, right here, I'm gonna to go to create a camera. And then I'm going to just zoom my camera in ever so slightly. And you can see that adds a, a keyframe in the transform track. And then um, we'll play back a little bit right here. And we'll just like zoom in at this point right here. Um, select our host, maybe a perspective like this. And there we go. So then we have another, uh, let's select our camera here. And then we have another keyframe in the transform track. So it'll be something like this. So our host will, the video will appear and then the camera zoom and a nice little shot like that, close up shot. And he's introducing iClone 6. Okay, so now I've loaded in this award ceremony scene from Virtual Studio Volume 2. And what I'm going to do is we're going to just do the same thing, except this time I'm going to make my virtual host manipulate the 3D prop. So I'm going to make a uh, user reveal and have my character, uh, once I go to the right folder here, have her reveal a table. So interact with the 3D environment. So let's right click and drag this 5.pop video, uh, import it as a billboard as well. And what we're going to do here, we're going to zoom in. Again, we need to press the R hotkey and scale this one up quite significantly as well. And we can place it, you know, wherever we want. Uh, I think somewhere like this should be okay. And for this particular video, we need to actually lighten up the video because the lighting in the scene maybe isn't, isn't uh, shining directly on our character. So one easy fix for this, we can go to our materials here. And in materials, what we can do is use the self-illumination slider. Uh, right here. And when I do that, you can see we can illuminate the character just like that. It's very useful, you know, for particular lighting environments to do this, to use this little tip. Okay, so she's standing and she's going to walk over. And we want to make uh, her reveal a table from the ground. So when she's finished her, like, uh, rising motion like that, let's go to our props, back to our props here. And in that Virtual Studio Volume 2, there's another different table. This one is a uh, table with a twirly kind of uh, base there, which looks pretty cool. I'm going to click and drag that in. And where do we want the table to appear? Uh, we're at frame two, uh, 712 right now, so keep that in mind. Maybe I want the table to appear like, like here, about right in front of her, right here. Okay, so we want the table to appear at that size. I think the size is okay, but we've modified the position at frame 712. So I need to right click and select remove object animation. Otherwise, it'll be moving around all throughout our project. Now, what I want to do at frame zero here, or frame 313, the beginning of our project rather, is I want to go to our uh, edit tab right here, and I want to scale it down to zero, zero, and zero on the X, Y, and Z axis. So it's essentially invisible right now. And then I'm going to play back, and when our character walks over, when she begins her motion like that, I'm going to go and select 0 0.1, 
0 0.1, and 0 0.1. And what that's going to do is I'm going to press F3 and go into the timeline. And you can see the table right here in the transform track that creates a keyframe. Okay, and then when she's finished her rising of the table right here, what I'm going to do is just change this to 100, 100, and 100. All right, so she's revealed that table out of uh, nothing. She's a magician, and you'll see it will begin to reveal at this point right here. So like that. Okay, maybe it's a little bit long, so we can take this keyframe right here and bring it a little bit closer. I'm going to get something like this. There we go. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I think my table could also use some self-illumination in this case, since the lighting is not particularly focused on it. So let's go to our surface and uh, can actually just uh, illuminate the table, I believe. We use self-illumination here. Let's uh, play back. Hey, uh, at least the surface is illuminated now, so we have a surface we can see on. Uh, okay, and then what, what I want to do next is use a revealer. So I'm going to go back to uh, this frame, actually, when she begins to reveal the table. And I'm going to go to my uh, materials or media uh, tab up here. And in media, under video, I have installed the Super VFX 200 pack, which includes a whole bunch of really cool transparent videos, uh, pop videos uh, from Digital Juice. I'm going to go to motion elements and choose revealers. There's a whole bunch of revealers and tune magic and video objects you can explore on your own time. I'm just going to use a simple reveal here. Uh, we're going to use uh, this light explosion. Okay, so I'm going to right click on the light explosion and bring it anywhere on our scene, really. Just import it in as a billboard. And let's play back and see what the light explosion looks like. Uh, it's over there. It's kind of small and not very well lit. So what we need to do is... Notice that it only starts as well when we imported it in. So we were at frame 560 or so when we imported it in. So when we import a video in, that's when the video is going to start playing. And that's important to know because you can time your videos when they start playing. So first of all, I want to get the position correct on this. So let's go ahead and align it. I'm going to use this align to, and we're going to select the uh, table. Go to X, Y, and Z. So that's essentially at the same alignment as the table. We can bring it a little bit forward because we want it to be in front of the table. And I also want to scale it quite a bit larger as well. So uh, maybe something like this. Uh, that size should be okay. We'll bring it down slightly as well. Okay. And I also want to self-illuminate this as well. Uh, so I'm going to just pump up that self-illumination. Um, actually, what I want to do for self-illumination is let's go back to where be before the, be before the uh, reveal starts. And we'll use self-illumination then. Okay, and that gets us a separate keyframe there. We'll talk about that later. All right, so now we have something like this. Reveal. All right, and I think the self-illumination right here needs to be at uh, 100 as well. Yep, there we go. Okay, so we could have just started at the beginning there. All right, so Shazam. All right, we have that table revealing out of nothing. If you want, you know, we can also stretch it up, make it larger like that. And every time you do that at a frame like 622 or whatever, you have to right click and remove object animation. Okay? And then we'll have something like this. Shazam! Okay. So magic. Alright, that's really all I wanted to show in this scenario. How you can, uh, you know, interact with the 3D object and use a revealer to kind of complement that interaction. So let's take a look at one final example here. I'm going to go to my content tab into the projects and let's load up the, uh, press office, the press room uh, from Virtual Studio Volume 2. And in this scenario, I'm going to import in a seated character. And we're also going to mess around with the environment a little bit as well. So what I need to do is find my seated character first in this folder. You can see there we have pop video, uh, this one right here. I'm going to use enough 3 Right-click that in and import it as a billboard one more time. Uh, right, we can't see it. He's kind of below the table there. And now he's, a, he's obviously a little bit small. Let's bring him a little bit forward on the 3D plane. Now the challenge here is because um, if I scale him up a little bit, you can see that his hands are kind of below where his torso cuts off. So we need to place this strategically in, a, in an area where we can still see his hands, but his torso, I'll make it a little bit larger there. There you go. His torso is still, you know, uh, it, it appears as though it's, you know, behind the table. So let's go up a little bit until we can see his hands. And what we can do is bring it a little bit forward, like this. And when we do so, notice that it still looks like, you know, his torso is behind the table, 
but his hands are above the table. So we can, you know, continue to do that, bring it forward like this, and we need to get maybe a position just like that. Okay, so then the next challenge here is, um, we can probably scale that a little bit smaller as well. It looks like it's a little bit too large for the chairs on the other side. Okay, that looks fine. And we'll bring him a little bit further back there. Now, one thing we notice here as well is that um, there's a shadow uh, on below our torso. So this billboard is casting a shadow. So if you want your billboard, if you don't want it to cast a shadow, you can just go to the scene tab right here. And there's a little shadow thing right here, a little shadow setting. You can select no shadows. And now it looks like, you know, his torso is indeed behind the table. And if we play back, video, you get a cool result like this. It looks very realistic, even though we just have that, you know, simple 2D video. And we get a nice, uh, you know, 3D feel with a virtual host. And this, you know, notice as well that his lighting is fairly washed out. It's a little bit over overexposed. What we can do is go to the materials here, and we can choose the different ambient color. For example, ambient color, we can change it from white to like a dark gray or something like that. Uh, maybe even a black will give us a bit more uh, saturation. And if we want to add a bit more color to his cheeks, we can also use the diffuse color uh, swatch right here and choose something like a nice, healthy, uh, you know, tan color or pink or something like that. Maybe even a bit more, a bit more hearty. There we go. Or it looks like he just came back from the beach or something. All right, so we have this, you know, cool setup right here, and video, we have you our you know, character in front of talking about uh, pop video and, and whatnot, and so on and so forth. So we're currently on camera zero four. Let's uh, switch over to a preview camera here. You can see a nice overhead view of our entire scene. We can, you know, go down through here, and you can see our our billboard right there. All right, so we don't want to go too far to either side. Now, what we can do is we can also uh, the cool thing about this set is we can add a little video into this little viewfinder in our camera as well. So let's go back to our uh, videos here and I have this scene 2 video that I've pre-rendered out uh, from the viewpoint of this camera. I'm just going to click and drag that directly onto my camera viewport right there. And when I do you can see it plays or it uh, will import rather into the uh, viewport right there. So that's pretty cool. And we can add a glow map onto that if we want as well. Uh, if we, uh, you know, select it right here. Uh, let's go to camera screen. You can see a video has been applied to the diffuse channel. We can load in a glow map as well. Let's just load in, you know, something like this uh, glow map right here. And we probably want to take down the uh, strength on that a little bit. Just a, just a little bit so it's glowing and you get that nice TV effect. And then if I play back, you can see video. You can now the exact same motions as the guy in the video. Color. And oh, wow, pretty cool. Right, so you can just video apply that again to the uh, viewfinder, have their own uh, the same video, inside. and have a situation Once you have like these this. Files, you can... And you can also, you know, um, replace any of the textures in this environment as well, simply by clicking and dragging them. So say, for example, we wanted to change this U.S. press room to the press room of, uh, you know, Canada, for example. You can go to our uh, desktop, and I have a Canadian flag. I'm just going to left-click and drag this, and into iClone, we're going to apply it to our... American flag right there, and suddenly we have a Canadian flag. So it's Canadian flag in the U.S. press room. And we can go and do something like this uh, Microsoft logo picture, for example, and I can apply that to the other flag on the other side. Um, we can select it properly. I think we did the curtain there. Okay, so we can have, you know, the Microsoft logo on the curtain. We'd probably want to flip that around, um, but uh, you get the point there. We can apply it like uh, to a plane if we uh, apply it like that. Uh, X, Y, there we go. Okay, so we apply it planar UV type to the, align to the Y axis, and we get Microsoft on the curtains. All right, so we're just totally messing up this uh, background here anyways. All right, so uh, we can go back to camera four and then just, you know, get our original uh, video set up like this and uh, change the perspective slightly. And we have the Canadian Microsoft you can US press room ready for action. All right, so that's really about all I wanted to show you guys in this uh, tutorial. Just a couple of examples of, you know, using a virtual host in different scenarios, or a real host rather in different scenarios. I keep saying that. Um, so if you have any questions, you can check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com. Again, uh, useful for commercial examples, whether it be in a TV studio or a virtual studio, or, you know, demoing your products. These virtual studio packs are pretty useful for a lot of that stuff. Um, so thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully you learned a lot, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.